The last thing we need to do is to monkey this up by trying to embrace a socialist agenda with huge tax increases and bankrupting the state. So one month of the year dedicated to black history, February, the shortest month of the year. Let's spend this week or let's start this week out talking about what we see in the Republican party now and take it back to some recent history and how it got here, kinda, right? So we hear Republicans always talking about fiscal conservatism. It's a staple in every Republican's talking point. We are Republicans talking about the idea of spending less or the economy. What we don't hear Republicans talking about, how they do not care about fiscal conservatism, as, as shown by Donald Trump's policy, all the way back to Ronald Reagan policies. Republicans were not fiscal conservatives at all. They said it, but they didn't do anything conservative as it pertains to the finances of this country. Republicans' idea of fiscal conservatism actually was a part of the Southern strategy. For those of you all who are not familiar with the Southern strategy, I will not bore you with a long history. I'll keep it as simple as they said it. It was a way to gain racist white people in the South vote or not lose those votes for supporting issues that benefited black folks. So you could get racist votes, but you can't say the N-word anymore. Here's how I would approach that issue. Here. As a, as, a, as a statistician or a political scientist, or no, as a psychologist, which I'm not, is, is how abstract you, you handle the race thing. In other words, you start out, and yeah, now y'all aren't quoting me on this. You start out in 1954 by saying, by 1968, you can't say, because that hurts your backfire, so you say stuff like uh, force busing, states' rights, and all that stuff. And you're getting so abstract now, you're talking about cutting taxes and all of these things you're talking about are totally economic things and the byproduct of them is blacks get hurt worse than white. It was a strategy created by Lee Atwaters and others to do one thing, keep the white racist vote for the Republican Party. Anybody saying anything else about the Southern strategy, which was also employed by Bill Clinton, is being fanciful to me. It's never ever okay to be a racist. Um, um, it's, you know, look, I think you always have to be careful, you know, if you're in the public, you know, eye, how you, how you say things. Atwater created a platform and plan that would allow Republicans not only to get racist votes without sounding racist, but they use exactly what you hear in Republicans' voice now. You hear that talks about force busing, i.e. now we're talking about DeSantis taking out black history from school. It's not talking about directly about black people, but it's talking about how you teach people to hate America. Learning your history makes you hate your country country, apparently. Also, they talked about this idea and this need for fiscal conservatism, knowing that force busting fiscal conservatism were issues that would hurt black people more than white people. So this was a way that you can hone in on the needs of the racist folk in the South, and at order was new to that. That may sound simple, but if you age that policy 30, 40 years, what you have now is a battle of wokeness. It's not about race. It's never been about race. I say battle of wokeness, not in a very coy way. The idea, the history of the word woke, not in the context of sleeping, but woke as it means in the social context, was a word meant to describe those who understood what it meant to be black. Woke was an adjective, or I should say, a synonym for black and aware. As early as it appears in our social context, back in the 20s with Marcus Garvey, the brothers said, stay woke Egypt, stay woke Ethiopia, stay woke Africa. This was an idea that black people had to stay woke, pay attention to what was going on if we were to address the harms. It also plays out in every decade, the 30s pops up in the 50s, the 60s, being woke was always about understanding what it meant and means to be black in these United States of America. And people pretending that this anti-woke mob or whatever you wanna call DeSantis and his, his idiot friends are doing anything other than anti-blackness, pay attention to the policies that they're enacting. Every time someone says something about anti-woke mob, it can be traced to anti-blackness behavior. And if it's not, it's so parallel that it's hard to distinguish the two. Listen, it is a wonderful day. Happy Black History Month and stay woke. Peace.